What is business intelligence? Business intelligence, BI, focuses on using technology and tools to gather and analyze data from multiple sources to provide decision makers with actionable insights. BI often involves the use of dashboards and reports that provide a visual representation of trends and performance indicators, making it easier for stakeholders to understand the data and act based on the insights provided. Hi, I'm Dan, I'm business intelligence developer here at BCS. And here's some tips for you when you want to get started being a business intelligence developer. My top one is learning SQL or SQL, as some people pronounce it. It stands for Structured Query Language. And it's the, the way you interact with databases, how you would uh, talk to a database, get what you need out from it. It's the biggest, best tool you can have on your CV if you want to get started with data, just generally. Um, it opens up so many doors for you and leads onto so many career paths. My next tip would be to get into some form of coding language. Um, doesn't really matter which one, but it's super handy. One that's very popular at the moment is Python. Not only can you sort of interact with databases and use your SQL queries with it too, but you can use it to automate loads of tasks, moving files around, um, automating certain things that take you a long time. And it's a really good skill, again, to have on your CV. Another tip would be to get into some form of cloud computing. There are many different platforms at the moment um, really come a long way in the last few years. Cloud computing is the default for business intelligence now. Uh, there's GCP, Google Cloud Platform, AWS, Amazon Web Services, and Microsoft Azure, just to name the three big ones. Um, they all roughly do the same thing and the services are called different things, but if you know one quite well, and uh, it's, it's super handy to know how they work, what tools are available in those to make things easier for yourself. Another tip would be to learn some form of data visualization tool. Um, there are many in the market, uh, Microsoft Power BI, uh, Google's sort of data studio on Looker, as they called it. Um, you've also got Tableau, which was brought out by Salesforce a while ago. Uh, there, there are so many to learn, but they all roughly do the same thing. You, you plug your SQL queries in behind the scenes, and it gives you the opportunity to present your data in some, some nice graphs and tables that make it really intuitive for your end users. Another tool to not forget about is Excel. And uh, in the world of data, it's quite a joke. Uh, Excel is quite old. You should use more modern tech, but Excel is the one tool all your stakeholders are pretty much guaranteed to have. So you understanding Excel really helps sort of your stakeholders and audience interact with and utilize what you provide them. You might make a nice looking dashboard report, but the question you'll always ask is, how do I get that into Excel? So if you work with your stakeholders and your audience to and understand that's just a requirement that they're gonna need, it makes things so much smoother for you. Um, also, it makes things very quickly for you as a developer to just quickly interrogate a quick data set. Instead of writing a SQL query, sometimes it is easier just to open the CSV file in Excel and just do some quick work on there. And normally if something, if your stakeholders are doing something that takes a long time in Excel, if you help them, like there's, there's always a way to make things quicker in Excel. And it just overall helps them like, raise their own awareness of data and bring their data literacy skills up as well. And really helps you get the engagement you want in your business intelligence reports as well. It leads to another sort of tool is that you should never forget about the people side of business intelligence. Um, I read a quote that says, business intelligence, 50% technical skills, 50% business skills, and the extra 10% going the extra mile is graphical design. So with the people side of things, it's really important to understand the, the requirements of who you're working with, uh, making sure you are getting them what they've asked for, what they need, and that you present it in a nice, usable interface that everyone just intuitively goes, oh yes, that's that number, that's that KPI I can measure there. And it really helps to, to revisit what you've built with them, what you've developed, so you can sit with them and go, is it still getting you the, the, the content you need? Is it still giving you the numbers you need? Um, and just building up the rapport as well with various teams across your organization, it just, it really goes far in helping you progress your career as well throughout business intelligence and making sure you remember the people side. So I don't have a traditional 
background or route into business intelligence. So I don't think it's necessary to, to be honest. Um, so I, I came from a, a background where I did a degree in physics. And um, so you don't have to do computer science. Obviously it does help or related sort of courses. Um, however, if you, if you need qualifications, there's, there's a good array um, from the cloud providers. So uh, Microsoft, they're, they're in Azure training. There's, there's tons of exams you can do, training courses you can do. The same with AWS and Google Cloud Platform, for example. They all have tailor-made courses with uh, video content and um, exams where you can train yourself up on how to use their specific tools, which is obviously quite beneficial. Um, when, when you're dealing with the cloud platforms. Um, also, if you, if you struggle to, if you're interviewing for roles in business intelligence and that whole chicken and egg thing of, I need experience, but I can't get experience because I don't have qualifications and vice versa. Um, a good thing to have is your own personal portfolio site. Um, so you can do your own projects. Uh, there's, there's good data sources online or freely available public data. Do you remember all the, the COVID dashboards that the government were producing? You could use those as a data source, but you can take those, use some of the cloud tools and produce your own business intelligence reports and analysis and present them on your own portfolio site. So it's almost like an experiential qualification so you can demonstrate that you know how to do certain things and use certain tools. Some of my recommended resources for you to sort of get inspiration or see how others work would be to take a look at the Microsoft Power BI community and likewise the Tableau community. Um, so they, uh, both of them have sort of public galleries for reports and dashboard reports that you can go and look at, uh, see how they work, get a feel for what's new. Um, uh, in the Microsoft Power BI community as well, they have a large forum where you can go for help or advice, uh, ask questions about how, how certain features work in Power BI. Um, you can also suggest ideas as well. And the developers of Microsoft are quite, quite on it when they read the forums and go, okay, that should be a feature that we talk about. To get involved in the, in the discussions on there is quite quite good. Um, Tableau public as well. There's there's some amazing reports in there that people produce. Um, some of them don't even look like reports; they look like infographics that are interactive, which is quite nice. Uh, very good for inspiration on how you design your reports. Um, and I recommend getting hold of a couple of books if you can. Things like um, if you if you want to learn coding, one I use was Automate Boring Stuff. It's a Python textbook. Uh, very good, freely available online. However, you can get the book if you if you uh, if you prefer. There's all sorts of good tips and coding examples about how to how to make the boring stuff, how to make things not take you a long time, and how how to move files around your operating system, how to upload data into databases. It's very 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 useful. Um, there are other sort of articles as well that you can read on sites like Medium, uh, where data scientists and other analysts produce their uh, their own work and they write up as well in an article format with code snippets embedded about how they approached the project. What did they do to overcome certain problems? Which is, you always encounter those sort of issues. So it's good to see how other professionals approach those. 